Right, today's topic is accounting concepts and conventions as prepared and presented by Mr. James. Right, first, what is a concept? Or rather, what is an accounting concept? And they are pronouncements by established professional accounting organizations that have become standard principles that must be followed when you are preparing financial statements. One of the financial statements that we are acquainted with right now in Form 4 is that of the balance sheet. Okay, so when you are preparing a balance sheet, there are certain concepts that you must use. And you have been using, but we didn't identify them yet for you. Okay. That's a concept. The established professional bodies that make these pronouncements are uh, people like the IESB, the International Accounting Standards Board, that is used concepts called International Accounting Standards. And then you have over in the States. You will have uh, people at the Financial and Securities Board. Okay. Accounting conventions, on the other hand, are generally accepted accounting practices. GAP. All countries have GAP. And these can change from time to time and depends on the requirements of reporting in that particular country, right? Um, what's the difference between co um, conventions and concepts? Well, conventions are practices and uh, concepts are principles, okay? Practices are not compulsory, but principles are compulsory and must be followed. Okay, so that's the difference. So um, we need not follow practices, local practices in accountancy, but we have to follow the international accounting standards, which are principles when we uh, preparing our financial statements. The first concept that we need to understand is what is called a separate entity concept or the business entity or simply sometimes you see some books using entity concept. All right, a business is considered to be a separate legal person from its owners. Notice the word person. It is considered to be a separate legal person because it is not actually a person, but it is more of an entity, right? This means that it has all the same rights and of a person, although it is an entity. And these rights are separate from those of the owners. So if you have a person, owning a business, the business is a separate person from the owner. Okay, so you cannot mix up their accounts or their transactions between the two persons. They must be accounted for separately. Okay, some of the rights we are talking about here uh, are the right to a name. Everybody have a right to be named. You cannot call um, somebody nobody. They must have a name, right? When they are born, they have the right to be named. And uh, so too with a business. When you establish a business, 
legally you should give it a name and that name is the unique name of the business somebody else cannot go and name their business with your business name okay the business must have an address where it conducts business from and um, it could be the business uh, the address of the owner although it can have its own address a right to own and dispose of property in its own name so the name from here it could own property in its name and the property would be the business property not the owner property okay and it can dispose of the property if that is in its best interest and it also have the right to enter into transactions through its agents right the agents are usually the owners or somebody the owner might appoint all right and those people have the, the right to enter into transactions on behalf of the company but the transactions are seen as those of the business okay now this com this concept helps us to keep our business affairs free from our own private home affairs for example Whenever the owner is putting money into the business, it is called capital, and the capital of the business is not the owner's capital. It's that capital, it's only for business purposes, and it's not for the owner to use for his private purposes. If he uses it for private purposes, then he has to withdraw it from the business and um, record it as a withdrawal or drawings from the business the next concept we're going to look at is consistency this says that the business entity must use the same accounting treatment or methods for similar transactions in every accounting period okay for example we record record all assets at their course whatever it cost us that is what we will write into the accounts all right if we buy a motor car for a hundred thousand dollars we will write it in the books of the business as one hundred thousand dollars if we record some of our assets at market value we look at the books and we see it have a um, hundred thousand as the cost of the vehicle and we say well you know we can't we can get much more than that for the vehicle now right uh, we decide we're going to change the course to the market value of 120,000 then that would be inconsistent you cannot do that too. okay so this would help to keep order in the recording of transaction. Otherwise, if you do not, if you are not consistent in recording the, the items, similar items, you will not know their true value in the end. Next, we have what is called going concern. And this assumes that the business entity will operate in the foreseeable future that is as far as you could see into the future in terms of time okay it, this means it will have an indefinite life and it would not be wound up or stop operating during that time okay it's an assumption and it's necessary because it's going to help us to properly value our business assets again okay um, if a business is going out of business in the foreseeable future then it has implications for the value of assets and liabilities okay
prudence or conservatism, right? The meaning of the word prudence, you would do well to look it up in a dictionary, and, um, but conservative means to take a, a more pessimistic view of things rather than a optimistic view of things. Okay, and um, this concept has to do with the attitude of the accountant. Okay, he must not be op very optimistic and um, show his business figures in a positive light to attract customers or to attract anything like that right it must be a correct response right you know and the statement the concept itself it could be summed up in a statement it said don't recognize or record profits revenues until it is in okay so you, you don't record sales or any other profit until you make the sale but you recognize or you record your losses as soon as you can foresee them even before you you, you make a loss if you can tell that you are going to make a loss in the, sometime in the future you have to record it right away okay you have to do what you call provide for it that is considered being prudent Okay, if you know uh, one of your betters, people you sell goods to on credit, has gone bankrupt and they would not um, be able to pay you, having that knowledge, you have to be prudent and the amount of money that they owe in you, you have to write it off as a bad debt right away, right? That is being prudent. You cannot be optimistic and say, okay, maybe this guy might recover and um, he may eventually pay me. So you're keeping it in the books and it is actually a loss, right? This concept helps us from overstating or understating our profits and losses. Now, in, in some of the textbook, you would see the opposite of this year. You would see um, students telling you, you it is better to understate rather than overstate, right? But that's not, you are not to overstate or understate. Uh, that is, okay, your profit and losses. Overstating is not being prudent. Understating is also not being prudent, okay? What you want is a very correct view of the situation. And this statement here would help you achieve that. It's a more balanced statement. That's why it's prudent. Next, we have what is called the accrual or matching concept. It states that revenue earned must be matched against expenses incurred in order to earn those revenues in the same period okay there must be some relationship between the revenue and the expenses right and the relationship should be that you have spent the expenses in order to make the revenue okay the expenses should have been spent in order to earn the revenue, right? That is a cruel or matching concept. So when you're using this formula here to calculate profit, revenue minus expenses equal profit, these expenses here must have been spent in order to earn these revenues here, okay? So you cannot take last year's revenue and compare it with this year's expenses to calculate your profit. It will not give you profit at any time, right? It would be uh, not a realistic figure of your profit. 
but last year's revenue must be compared with last year's expense and this year's expense with this year's revenue in order to get profit a realistic value for your profit for this year right so that is called the accrual or matching concept it helps us to calculate a realistic value of profit now this is very important especially when you have to pay things like taxes and so on some people want to hide some of this and, and match it against a year that is gone already okay so you have to pay less taxes and so on or the business look better by an increased profit figure okay but you have to match all the expenses against all the revenue that you earn from those expenses the duality or dual aspect we have seen this one already and we know how to use it every transaction has two aspects that means it affects two items in our financial statement one is represented by the assets and the other by the claims against it okay so that would help us to record transactions using the double entry system money measurement accounting is concerned with things which can be measured in money in Trinidad and Tobago, this would be TNT dollars. In the US, it is US dollars. So it must be measured in money. If it can't be measured with money, then you cannot include it in your accounts. Okay? Um, this would help us to place value on assets and liabilities. There are certain assets that could be measured with, with other um, units of measurement other than money. Like if you have things that you can measure according to the weight upon kilograms, what you can, and then you don't know the money value of it, you cannot record that on your financial statements. Okay? You have to get the dollar value of it right then i go three if you, you could you could have a lot of things that are capable of being measured by weight or liquid measure and, uh, but you can't put that on a balance sheet 200 kilograms of sugar right um, you must have the value in money right and uh, each country has their own money measurement in in Trinidad and Tobago we have TT dollars in the US they have US dollars in Europe they have the euros uh, in Britain they have pounds sterling Japanese have yens okay so they measure it in their currency and this helps us to place value to the assets and liabilities okay so that brings us to the end of um, our presentation on accounting concept you can read it again on uh, in page one